Cracking the code viewers and magnet backers. We have an exciting update for you today. We have new magnet samples in from the factory. And this is an important milestone, not just because they're red, but actually more importantly, because these two samples are the first ones that they've sent us that they can actually produce in shippable quantities. What I mean by that is the big problem that we've been trying to solve for the past six months is not necessarily getting the magnet to work properly and to look correct. Some of the early samples that they've sent us, like this one here, did look pretty good. This looks what we, like what we expect a magnet to look like and it works like the way we want a magnet to work. But the problem is with this one, the hit rate or the yield was bad. In other words, they could get this to, to work, but they'd have to make for every one that they wanted to work, that they'd have to make nine or 10 of them because something went wrong with the manufacturing process having to do with either the plastic or the rubber, the molded rubber grips. So this was the big problem. And specifically what kind of things that would happen was in the earlier part of the year, we were trying to mold the plastic grips, but what would happen there is you would get warping in the plastic as it cooled. So they had to try different formulations of this ABS plastic to get one where they could actually mold these parts in a way where they'd be completely flat and uniform. And then once they got that, for the second half of the year, the big problem that we had was the rubber grips. These are not just stick-on rubber pads. This is actually a molded or molten rubber that gets injected into the mold. As it cools, it fuses with the plastic, so you don't need glue. The net effect of this is that because it's molded, you can make all these really complicated shapes and have them look really smooth and finished because it's fusing with the underlying plastic. The problem here is the fusing part. The rubber that we were using and the plastic, they were not playing nice together. And so you would get sort of uh, bumpy imperfections in the surface of the grip on the inside here. And of course that's no good because you want this to be flush with your phone so that when you put this in here, it's perfectly flat and really grips the smooth surface of your phone. So that was one problem. And then the other problem was because the cooling or the bonding wasn't working, you would get this fringe of flaky rubber around the edges. Basically we had arrived at, at a point where we had this sample here that actually worked pretty well, but we just couldn't make it. It was kind of like, there it is, I can see it, but we can't, we can't actually produce those. So we had to go back to the drawing board and find another formulation of ABS plastic that would play better with the rubber grips. And that's what they've been doing for the last six months. And this is what accounts for the delays between our updates because it's basically just like a, a technical trial and error process that the factory is working on. And there's not much to say in between the updates other than the fact that they're, they're trying to do this. So uh, the good news here is after trying a bunch of different plastic formulations, they came up with this recipe here that does bond really well with the rubber. You can see, uh, actually I'm gonna give you a close up shot of this, just how smooth this is. And these two dimples here, I don't know if you can see those, but that's where the rubber flows into the mold. And you can see how precise that is. If you have to see something like that, you at least want it to be really uniform with a nice round kind of appearance so that it, it looks intentional. If I had seen this not knowing how these kind of products were made, I would just think, oh yeah, that's got to be there for some technical reason. It, it just looks cool, right? But again, more importantly, you want this rubber grip surface to be really flat and smooth and uniform so that the phone slides in and it makes flush contact, kind of like the, uh, the tires that you'd see on a Formula One car. They have that really smooth rubber surface with no tread so that it really grips the road. And in earlier versions of this, as we were trying to get the rubber to mate with the plastic, it was, uh, that was definitely not happening. Those smooth rubber dimples or those smooth dimples there where the material gets injected were bumpy and they were misshapen and it actually wasn't 
mating flat with the foam. So this actually looks really good. And that flakiness that I talked about around the edges, completely not there. That is a really smooth looking kind of professional edge on that. And even though that's cosmetic, it just speaks to the fact that the, uh, the material is bonding well and the, the rubber grips are working. Also, the, the rubber itself, this is the best rubber we've ever had on any of these samples. If you run your finger across this, it feels tacky. It has uh, what we call a low durometer, which means it's stickier rubber. So when you get the phone in there, it really grips pretty well. And you just squeeze that in, and then this thing is, that doesn't really want to move. It's making really good contact. And that was actually pretty tricky to get that. We had to try a bunch of different rubber formulations for that. The downside of this is once they changed the ABS recipe to mate better with the rubber grips, they had to go through this whole testing process again to figure out the cooling so that this plastic itself uh, wouldn't warp. And in order, or as part of that, they were getting some warping with this new recipe, and so they had to actually go in and make changes to our models to kind of scoop out sections of the plastic that were too thick. And I don't know if you can see this here, but this area down here is all kind of hollowed out now compared to, if you look at our previous sample here, notice that, I don't know if I can get these both there, but this area here is flat. And they had to go in and in kind of very precise fashion, hollow out just this little area here, because this amount of plastic in this one area, it was still staying kind of a little bit liquid internally, and it was causing warping here as it cooled. So they had to get rid of some of that thickness. Now these parts of the magnet here, we hollowed those out ourselves. It was part of our original design. But it happens to work really well for injection molding because you really don't want this really big fat piece of plastic here to be fill up. That won't cool properly and you'll get what are called sink marks in the finished result. Notice there are actually still a few of those. If you look, I don't know if we can see this here, but if you look about right here, you might see a little bit of an indentation on both sides, right up there there and over here. You can see um, if the light is hitting this right, you'll see a little bit of a divot there. And that'll be true on the other side as well. Like right up there, maybe over there too. Let's see if you can make that out. But that's a function of this part of the plastic up here being thicker and not quite cooling properly. It's sort of similar to if you ever did any repairs on your drywall and you put too much joint compound in there to fill up the hole, but as it cures, the center of it shrinks a little bit and you end up with like a little, what looks like a sand trap on a golf course. That's kind of what's happening here. But in this area here, they, it's very minor and it doesn't really seem to affect the operation of the rest of it. And that's kind of the, the, um, the key. We've gotten questions over time when people ask us, hey, you know, is this taking long because you guys are fussing over like cosmetic details, you wanna make it perfect. Because hey, I don't need it perfect, I just need it to work. This is what people said. And the answer is actually no, <laughs> we haven't been doing that. The challenges have all been just making it work at all. In other words, this sample from six months ago is fine. It looks fine, it, it works fine. It just, the hit rate was so poor that it would, we would have to make thousands of them just to make a few hundred, if that makes any sense. So, um, I didn't have any problems with the cosmetics of this at all. I, I think it kind of looks perfect, or at least perfect for our purposes. So that's not really the problem. The problem was just getting it to work at all. And uh, in fact, you can still see up here, there's these two dimples here. That's another example of not perfect. I don't know if you can see that there. But these two dimples are where the plastic flows into the mold. And then it cools, and when they inject this from the mold, it kind of breaks off, and it leaves a little tiny rough patch, like the size of a like a toothpick. But, you know, ideally you would want those maybe on the underside of the magnet so that you wouldn't see them. But this shape turned out to be fairly complicated to make with all these kind of weird curves and the, the way that the parts interlock. And this was the easiest place for them to put these, these two inflow kind of dimples here. So th it is what it is. We're not overly fussing about that. And hey, you know, you got a little bit of an indentation here and some dimples. It's got character, right? <laughs> you know, it's fine. People made this. Totally cool with that. What we really want is for this thing to work, right? So none of these kind of small surface imperfections really matter. And in fact, if I, uh, if I didn't know about this process, I don't even think I would notice half of these things. If you work in, in product design, or if you work in injection molding, and you go to Bed Bath & Beyond, you can probably pick stuff off the shelf and find all these little imperfections, but the average person doesn't even 
kind of see that, you know. The one thing that we do care about and where it does need really, realistically does need to be perfect is the way that it works. And in that respect, I will tell you one thing that I am a little bit concerned about with these samples. As good as they look, as cool as they are, there is a little bit of grippiness to when I, when I slide it open, it sticks a little bit, just a little bit, compared to, let's say, the, the previous sample with the different plastic. This one's particularly smooth. So in previous samples, the operation has been more smooth. And uh, whereas in this one, if it's been sitting for a bit and I go to open it, sometimes it, it actually won't open for a split second and I gotta wiggle it and then it pops open. Yes, it still opens. So why would I be concerned about this? Well, I'd be concerned about this because these are only two, right? We don't know what's gonna happen over 500 or 1,000 or a few thousand of these. What if these two are a little sticky, but what if you know, 500 or you know, 1,000 units in, you've got a batch of them that cool a little bit wrong and they come out and they don't open at all. Or it takes a lot of force to open those. That's where I would be concerned that maybe what we're seeing as a minor, you know, a nitpick here might become more important over the long haul. So in its current form, it does work. And in fact, I'll show you on the actual instrument itself, just so you can see how this works, it, uh, it's not really an issue, this, this slight tackiness. What you do is you grab both of the uprights with two hands, pull them apart, get it right on the neck here. And then one-handed operation, you can just slide it right open. And this one-handed operation was a design goal from the beginning because, of course, you got to have another hand free to get your phone in there. So you put your phone in, and then you snug it up just to make sure it's making solid contact. And once you do that, that's in there really good. It doesn't want to move. Again, this is the best gripping rubber that we've gotten yet. This feels really solid. And the grippiness or the durometer of the rubber down here being a little bit stickier also sticks on the neck really well. As long as you have maybe a quarter to a half an inch of fretboard sticking up, you'll grip really nicely. I wouldn't go jumping around on stage with this. It's not to film your music video. It's to film your technique while, while seated, preferably. But nevertheless, um, this actually works really well. Then, of course, to get your phone out, it's going to be one-handed operation again. Just pull it open. And you can see it's stuck a little bit there, but it still does work. And it still snaps back. And it's not wiggling around, again, because the grips are pretty good. And I can just pull the uprights again and take it off. So this, this sample, as it stands, works great. But I'm a little bit concerned about the grippiness. And if, if there's the possibility that units might come off the line working worse than this, that could be a problem. So we're due to get another batch of samples in a couple of weeks, maybe two, three weeks. And we've asked them to, uh, to take a look at the, the smoothness of the operation. It could have something to do with the tolerances in here. If you let these things cool for longer, or you take them out um, after only a less cooling time, it can influence in small amounts how big these parts are and that can influence how well they fit together. It could also have something to do with just the material itself, might be a little bit stickier than this, uh, the previous ABS that we're using, maybe just is a more, uh, maybe it's a material that slides better just because of its chemical composition. That's over my head, I don't really know. But we've reached out to them and we've said, hey listen, this is the only concern with these, they look great, but let us know what you can do about this. Is there some tweak that we can do that won't you know, it's not rewinding to starting at zero, but is there something we can do to the cooling times? Or maybe even putting a bit of lubricant in there, like a silicone or a mineral oil or something that wouldn't eat away at the ABS itself. Is there some way that we could do that? Possibly. We should be back with you fairly soon when we get a couple more samples from the factory and hopefully we'll have some good news to talk about there. Once we get to that point, we will then have to talk about or surmount the shipping challenge, which is just getting a big pallet of those things from there to here and then getting them to you. And if you've turned on the internet at all recently, you may be aware that the shipping world has gone, kind of gone nuts as a result of the pandemic, where the boats aren't getting here and the trucks aren't filling up, and as a result, the cat food's not getting on the shelves. So sorry, cats, you don't, you don't get to eat today. But it's a problem, it, and it's a problem that's affecting everybody. In our case, I kind of would see it almost as a positive because, hey, then we're in the same boat, <laughs> metaphorically, as everybody else. I would love to get past the molding and the technical stuff and get to the point where we just want to get these things in boxes and get them out. So stay tuned for that. 
And we'll be back with you uh, hopefully pretty soon. And once again, as always, thanks for backing the magnet.